guys, Steven with 15 points of tennis and we're back doing a very intricate detailed concept, concept of holding your shot. Now, before we get into what even this means, and you might think you know what this means, okay, have you ever played a player and think back to your last match when you're attacking, trying to drive the ball, control the point? Have you ever felt like sometimes you're playing a player and they know exactly where you're hitting? Like they're there before you even hit the ball. Even no matter how good of a shot you hit, it's like they read it right off your strings. They're right there, they're playing defense, right? You just can't get the ball by your opponent. And look, I've, I've had this frustration so many times, you know, competing, right, at a, at a highly competitive, you know, all playing all through juniors. No matter how hard I hit the ball, my opponent was always there. They were always getting another ball back. Whereas some people aren't even hitting the ball as big but they're hitting winners, their opponent's guessing, their opponent's off balance, right? If you think about Roger Federer, he doesn't hit the biggest ball. He doesn't hit the fastest ball, but he hits winners like crazy, okay? So the question is, what is going on here? How is he doing this? So Roger does hit really hard, but not necessarily hard relative to other pros. And to hit this many winners on the doll, crazy. So aside from spin power, you can't tell where he's going to hit. This is a concept, what I call holding your shot for disguise. Now, how is something disguised? First of all, reading body language. If, if, if your opponent is off balance or leaning like this, well, someone, well, someone clueless will, will look at, at body language and not know what to do. So it doesn't matter if you're playing an opponent who's clueless. But if, I, if you're playing an opponent who tracks the ball while who's watching your body language, reading, he sees you off balance and moves to the ball, right? They're going to read you like a book. Now to put my tracking and reading body language skills to the test, I am way behind the baseline playing defense. And I hit this ball and I see the student on the back leg. And now as we play this clip, he's way off balance. And this is some ridiculous spin move, which I've never taught ever, never will. But obviously I start running for it already. I got the first step super fast. And I can put that ball away and punish. So first of all, obviously, you have to be on balance and spacing with the ball here. Because when I'm on balance and when I'm spaced perfectly, this same ball, I can pull across court. This same ball, boom, I can hit up the, up the line, inside out, etc. Okay, that's the key thing. But that's not what we're going to focus on today because that's pretty obvious. We're going to talk about the mind-body connection and how that affects your game and how you disguise your shot. So, Whatever you're thinking, see our body language is, is so strongly tied to how we think, right? If you're, if you're sad, well, you're gonna have droopy shoulders. If you're happy and elated, you're gonna be smiling and looking up. And in tennis, it's very much the same thing. Your body either tells your opponent where you're gonna hit or it could disguise where you're gonna hit, all right? And that's where we get into the concept of holding your shot. See, when I'm, if you, even think now this is at a very high level if you're even thinking about let's say you're going to pull the ball cross court that way right just me thinking i'm going to hit hit the ball there my intent to hit the ball that way well my body is already telegraphing to my opponent if your now if your opponent's kind of a dummy and not very aware of body language and signals well then they're not going to pick up on that then they're just going to be clueless not hit their split step bang the ball the winner's going to go by them but if, if they're great at what I call tracking and they're watching your body language, boom, they're gonna be right there before you even hit the ball. Because you've telegraphed with your body language, you're gonna hit there. So here's a great example of me reading body language, okay? So the student is gonna do a good job opening up the court, but I see this a mile away and again, pull, redirect that ball across court. And again, you know, when, his, when he makes up his mind early, I started running long before you could hit that shot. So, if you really ask the best players in the world, like, oh, remember that, that one play when you pull that forehand cross court and it was just an amazing shot? A lot of times, if you ask whether it's Sampras or Federer, they remember that play for sure, but they weren't like, oh, I was, I knew I wanted to go cross court. What did they say? Ah, it just happened. It just happened. So, if, when you, if you want to get truly disguised with your shot and holding your shot, you cannot make up your mind until the very moment before you, before you hit the ball. So let's say you get a short ball or put away, you're holding, you're holding, you haven't made up your mind yet because once you make up your mind, your opponent's gonna know where you're gonna hit. 
So you're holding, holding, holding. At the last second, bang, you, you pull it cross court. At the last second, you hold, bang, you pull it inside out. And therefore, your opponent won't know where you're gonna hit. Okay, big, this is a big deal if you wanna be able to hit winners, if you don't want people just tracking your balls down and knowing exactly where you're gonna hit. So, without further ado, let's roll into the demo. We're gonna show you how to disguise your shots, hold your shot, okay, be able to hit a massive amount of winners, pressure your opponent like you've never had before. So this is not an easy skill to learn by any means, okay? So we're gonna start off level one in drills. And this is just me feeding like a floater. And then look, I step one way or the other way, either left or right, and the student is expected to use his peripheral vision and go the other way. Again, like that one wasn't quite as good. If I, if I leave a little bit less time before I move, it makes it harder. See, he already made up his mind going cross court. And so he has to use his peripheral vision and not make up his mind to the very last second. Again, made up his mind. And also, even with the feed as I'm feeding, if I hit it in his strike zone versus a little bit shorter, now if he's moving forward, he actually has a tougher time because when you, everything is on autopilot, well, he, he went, uh, he made up his mind too soon again. We talked about having a good stroke already. Oh yeah, man, he didn't get his feet there. But when you already have a good stroke, it's easier to have that on autopilot and let everything work automatically. And then you can focus on your opponent and which way he or she is moving. But if you don't have a very good stroke and if your footwork isn't very good, don't worry about holding your shot yet. Go back and work on your footwork until it's muscle memory, until you can do it without even thinking. And then after you master that, then come back to the concept like holding a shot. That was a good one right there. Okay, he was in rhythm, lined it up, saw me move. Oh man, that's terrible. So this is really working on, on solid, your peripheral vision. Okay, just holding, holding, holding all the way, and then finishing. Okay, it's great for finishing balls. It's great for floaters. Uh, there's a lot of... Oh man, so that one he's reaching for. So... The funny thing is when you practice, he's normally pretty good at this. He'll have a chance to redeem himself. That was a good one right there. But obviously when you first start working on this, if you're not used to holding your shot, it can be a nightmare. You know, it can be very, very frustrating. And when you start imp implementing in a match, it can be very difficult as well. Okay, so this is a drill part. Uh, once you feel comfortable, that was a good one right there. Once you feel comfortable, with that will go into a game. Now on these next few, that was an amazing little flick right there. I told him to actually telegraph his body one way. We, again, we talked about the mind-body connection. So I told him to actually make it look like he's hitting one way and at the last second pulled the other way. So he maybe actually lean one way. We talked about mind-body connection, right? You can actually trick your opponent by thinking you're going to hit one way and then change it at the very end. So this is like a pump fake in basketball. Well, you don't necessarily want to do a pump, double pump like that, okay? But there's some very advanced things you can do in which you can get your opponent off balance. And that's, again, even higher level. Look, at my level, I don't attempt this. If you have a particularly really good stroke on one side and you're looking for that next layer concept, that next level concept to make your already good weapon even more potent, see right there, he got me leading left and he went right. Okay, then this might be the thing for you, okay? But other than that, just start with the basic holding your shot. Now we're going to roll out into a game, and this game we're going to start right here, a tie rate to 10. If he doesn't hit a clean winner, he loses a point. So that's 0-1. Alright, I'm just going to let this kind of roll for you. That's 0-2. And you're going to kind of see how when he gets in a groove, it can be great. There he probably looked up. Okay, that was a winner right there. Um, but this is just a great game to play, you know, on both sides. For me, I'm trying. He missed that one there. He pressed a little too hard. That was good holding your shot. So for me, on the, on the near end, I'm trying to practice not guessing number one and not 
and really reading his body language on his end obviously that was a, that was amazing right there um, on his end uh, he's practicing not making a decision until the very last moment and, and still he has to execute it's not good enough just to hold your shot you still have to hold your shot and you know be perfect with the spacing be perfect with the rhythm and the footwork and hit a big ball to, I mean big enough ball to put it away so that when I read him I read his body language I got it back and in this game like even if I touch the ball like that if I just touch the ball um, he loses a point so when we're playing this tie break he has to hit a clean winner in order to win the point Yeah, maybe that one's just, sometimes he doesn't have to do a great job holding a shot, he just has to hold it long enough, okay, for me not to get a read on it. And that one was solid as well. Okay, and, and just holding a shot, again, you don't have to be the, the, the Roger Federer of this, but even just holding it a little bit, right there, freezing, it makes a big difference. Finally, we'll show you the context of holding in a few points. Now, this is a very classic hold where I go right, he goes left, there, okay. Now, the optimal time to do this, that was a good hold as well, is when the ball is floating. Obviously, you can't, by definition, really hold your shot when you don't have a little extra time to hold and wait. But normally, this is a uh, really long point, it's almost done but when that ball sits up and floats that's the optimal time it's usually when your opponent's kind of kind of in position but scrambling back there hold and then I, I saw which way he was leaning and went the other way it's something you could practice hold I think I missed that one by a little bit maybe but as a player hold just that extra little bit of holding puts a little bit more pressure on my opponent and I don't hit the ball very big so if you don't hit the ball big, it will help for sure. Now that last one and this one, again, much harder even, but holding your shot, even when you're on the move, you can just hold it just a touch. Okay. Now this is close combat coming to net, and holding your shot coming to net when you're, is very important. It's a little tougher if we were both standing far behind the baseline, but at net, hold, and then you beat me there. Okay. And that's a little easier. Right now, last one you can see Rafa giving Fed a little dose of his own medicine. Alrighty, well that wraps this up. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, like if you found true value in this video, and if you've made it through this far, I think you have hit that subscribe button. I'm super excited. Not only for the stuff that's coming out to this channel that's gonna come, you know, right to your page if you're subscribed to my channel, but all the things I'm adding to the online accelerator program over the next few months. So if you have not started the online accelerator program, holy moly. Okay, I've included the first video in the program below where I go from A to Z. I cover the five steps that every player progresses through to become the truly skilled advanced player. Okay, to hit your potential. So we've just touched the tip of the iceberg. All right, click that button to subscribe. Click the link below. I'm excited for you to take the next steps on your tennis journey. We'll see you in the next video.